Hi, so I hope you're super excited. It is the first official week of Volume 2 of Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. So by now you probably have a little bit of an idea that you're either going to do your Christmas journal, a winter journal, or you might like to do a combination of both. Um, I think I'll be focusing mostly on Christmas, but who knows, I could mix it up a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do, my book is on a pile of stuff. There's stuff under here that I'm going to show you in a minute. I'm going to show you where my inspiration for this project is. So I want my I want my journal to be a style. Okay, so throughout the um, the Journal of Stitchery Volume Two, I want to try and keep to a style. Now, Rach, you're going to love this style because it's very you. And I wanted to challenge myself to do something different because I did a lot of super bright rainbow colors in my first journal of stitchery so this one i'm challenging myself to be a bit different so mandy patullo is going to be my inspiration and there are some things in here that i want to show you that are going to be the style that i'm aiming for so let me just find the page i really should have marked it out um so we love mandy patullo's style mum rachel and i we all love her style that's a really good idea for background, doing sort of crazy patchworking, layers and layers of fabric collage. Um, but just to give you an idea, so I've showed you the bird before. I guess they're the kind, that's kind of the style I'm going for. So I do want to go for red, white and blue plus green to add that Christmas element in. So mine will have sort of neutral colours, reds, greens, and then I'm also going to add in some blues. So this is very much the style I'd like to go for. Old, frayed, holes in things, ripped up, things like that. And then this one here is a really big source of inspiration. So I want to do something kind of like that. Old, tattered for the background of my block. So you've probably watched Rachel's video already and you'll know that this, these first two weeks the theme is deer. And the feature is, hang on, just let me get my book so I don't get it wrong. And so it's, it's reindeer for the Christmas prompt. And if you want to do the winter prompt, it's deer. You could do whatever you want. I'm actually going to do a deer, but I'm going to add Christmas to it. Um, so I guess it's like a reindeer. And then our monthly feature theme for this first month of July is to do a tag. So I haven't thought about how my tag will be incorporated in yet, um, but I will get to that. I'm going to just start with the first block. But what I thought I'd do today is I would show you a little bit more about my inspiration, Mandy Patullo, and then, and then some things I've pulled together. So old and tattered, old bits of quilt. I've got some old quilt. I might need to source some more, um, particularly in the colours. And there was another page. Um, this. I like this kind of patchworky. I'm thinking I might make one of these pouches. I think they're really cool to keep my little project in. Um, so yeah, they, they were the main pages. Just checking if there was any others I wanted to show you. I thought there was one more towards the back. Um, yeah, I like that one as well. So old pieces of linen with just a little piece and little cross stitch lettering, etc. That as well, I really liked. So I think you get the idea of the colours that I'm going to. And it's a bit of a challenge because I do gravitate towards bright colours, although I do really like those combos as well. Um, so I'll just show you this tablecloth. It's actually super cute. I got it at my crafty op shop. It was $15, but it's perfect because look, it's all Christmassy. I won't be cutting this up. I actually love this. It's fully completed. I'll be using this at Christmas. Okay, so let's reveal. All right, so this is what I've pulled. I may eliminate some things, but I'm going to go through some of the things that I'm thinking. So firstly, I've got old Suffolk puffs, okay, greens, greeny blues, 
Okay, and these are all old ones. They're actually quite soft. Some of them are super soft. And I love the little weathered bits. The older, the better. So I've got quite a few old ones. And then a few blues as well. Oh, that one's a bit wrong. Chuck that one to the side. Um, and reds. Look how much that's faded. Okay, so stuff it puffs. I'm putting everything, all my bits and pieces, are going into a box. So I can keep it all together. And I can add and eliminate. And when I need ideas, I just come to my box. Just stick that to the side and everything's going back into my box. Okay, then I've got some vintage um, embroidery. So this one's actually really perfect. This is another one I found at the sewing basket. But I thought it was quite a cute fit with the owl and the red berries in the tree. So I may or may not use that one. I might keep that one. Um, this one is perfect for this week's theme. It's got a beautiful little deer, um, which I love. So could be an option. Some scraps. Of um, I love the cross stitch kind of vintage embroideries. This red piece here would go really well. Some more cross stitch style. Love that. I want to put that in somewhere. It's kind of got the right colours there. Green, blue, reds. And this one as well. This one cost me one dollar at the sewing basket. Okay, so that could fit in or I might cut out a bit of that. So they're my little doily inspirations, my embroideries. Then I've got um, different kind of, whoops, another Suffolk puff. Then I've got um, some different laces, um, lacy doilies. Just to show you, I've, I've pulled a heap of scraps, scrappy pieces of laces. I like this one with the whole range. Okay, so quite a few of them. I'm not going to use all of this. I've pulled a lot more stuff. Some old bits of lace. Um, this kind of trim, trim is always good to add. Um, I've just pulled a bunch of... Look how delicate those kinds of things are. A bunch of random lace bits. So I've got options. I've got obviously a lot more than this, but... Um, this one I put in a lot of the winter packs. So the winter packs are coming out. They're all ready to go. Sorry, it's taking me a bit of time to get them all together, but they'll be in the post um, tomorrow. Um, that, oh, and by the way, people that are asking, yes, I am making more. I've just finished sorting out everything so I can post everyone's that's already ordered and I will be putting some more up. Let's say I'll aim for Friday. Okay, so I'll put some... Christmas ones up, some winter ones up, and I think I'll do some mixed ones. Um, but they do take me a while to put together. Like I do have collated everything, but to actually pack them up the way I wanted them to look takes me about 15 to 20 minutes per pack. So it's taken me ages. I'd done all the sorting to begin with, but the actual packing to line it all up, to iron everything, it's taken me a really long time. So I'm sorry I'm a bit delayed on that, but they're coming. Um... So these are some, this is an example of some of the stuff that I dyed myself. So I will be putting some of my dyed bits and pieces. Okay, things like this. Um, there's some more here. Some, sorry, different bits and pieces. I might tear up bits and um, like that as well. Some of the rickracks I've dyed, um, that red and that blue one and that green one there were all dyed by me. And then these ones are just ones I bought. So I'll put some rickrack in. Little dyed pieces. Old bit of sari silk, which came on something. Love this. Can't remember who did this, but look. They stitch a bit of trim on it. I love that. That's really cool. So I'm going to put some of that on. Um, this is really old. Sort of. I don't know if it's been, if it was actually meant to be a trim or it's been cut off the edge of something because it's all frayed. And a few people have these in their Christmas packs as well. Um, some of that and some of that is in the Christmas packs. Dyed bits are in the Christmas packs. Oh, and I love this trim. I just found this tonight. I totally forgot I had it, but that's perfect for Christmas. I might even share some of that with some of the up and coming Christmas packs. Okay, so lots of yummy bits and pieces there. Oh, I found this button on an old... Um, it was like a little bag. So it's a mother of pearl, like a shell button. 
So I'll use things like that and the linen covered buttons. So I've got fabrics. It's a really old piece of Liberty, which I could use, but I'm not sure yet because it has got yellow, which is kind of the wrong color. And then um, pieces of like old Sanderson fabric. This one's got a green base, or I might even just use, you know, little bits like there. Um, another piece, I think it might be old Sanderson. It's like a thick linen, upholstery linen. I love this fabric, and this has definitely gone into many of the blue packs. I, I found this at the Crafty Op Shop, and I really love that one. So there's that one. This was an old pouch, um, which was kind of coming apart, so I've torn it up, and that's beautiful kind of old French tea towel -y kind of fabric. Scraps with green and then I wanted to go these these obviously don't look old but I thought I might try and weather some of the bits of fabric so faded kind of English fabrics and most of these I think I got from Lou with Blue um, from um, Etsy and I'll link the store at the bottom and we have we have talked about um, Debbie before so a lot of these beautiful in fact I think all these have pretty much come from her from packs I've got from her so I've pulled out ones that I think could go along with my theme. I think that one's by accident. That was stuck because it's pink. I don't want pink. So I'm looking for reds and old. And these are soft and a lot of these are thin, which is perfect. And they look really old. So they're all from her. Um, this one as well, I think. They're beautiful. Um, what else? I think this one, maybe. Um, possibly this one I think I got from her this one um, I think I might have got this one as well and then this piece of old linen so all that kind of stuff okay, lots of little bits there this one I think I might have got from Melanie purveyor of reclaimed textiles I think that's right and we've linked Melanie before she sells through um, Instagram so um, a lot of the Sanderson scraps and the upholstery the ones like this that were upholstery pieces this as well have come from Melanie just bits I've collected so this is just an old piece of linen and it's had a hole that's been darned so I even thought I could use that but it's it's super soft it's really nice linen so I might use some of that um, probably a Melanie piece as well Big flowers, which will probably be too big for my journal, but you know, I might even just use a little bit on the little bit on the kind of corner, that kind of thing. But they're just they're nice textured fabrics. A lot of them are linen. Um, this fabric, I bought it years ago. I was going to make a project for Mum. Sorry, Mum, I never got it done. Um, I'll just open it out. I remember it being super expensive, but I thought that would be perfect for the Christmas kind of theme so I use some of that mum I might even give you some because I did originally buy that for you um, to make something for you can't remember what I was going to make anyway obviously didn't get around to it um, just some other this is an old piece of um, shirt I think I got that from someone and bits that I've found vintagey looking fabrics at the sewing basket I think Rachel you might have given me that one it's a linen um, Sewing basket, this one cost me a dollar. Yep, really like that one. So a bit of that might go in. I think this might be another Melanie fabric. Good colour, the green can fit in. And where I've got like obviously purple and yellow flowers, I'd probably avoid those bits. Like I might go for that bit there because it's more Christmassy. And then I've got some green ticking, which I either got from you, Rach, I can't remember, or I got it from Melanie. Okay, so I'm going to add in a piece of my old sheet that I've ripped up. A lot of people have this um, in their packs. In, I put it in the, both the Christmas pack and the blue pack because I did add in a little bit of blue into the Christmas pack, just a little bit of aqua. Um, a lot of this sheet is faded in certain areas just because I've had it for so long and it's worn and drying in the sun and things like that. There's a lot of faded bits, so you, you'll probably get a discoloured bit, but I actually... I actually like the faded bit, so I might even find one that's faded. Um, piece of, this was Amy Butler fabric, and then I'll add in some sort of other bits and pieces like this that could go with Christmas. Okay, I really want to add in some old feed sack. So this is 
this is from Melanie, one I got from Melanie. I've got a few from her. So it's an old feed sack and it's perfect because it's green and red. From um, Southern Mills, Albury. Albury's where our dad was born and grew up. So that's pretty cool. Got to cut that up and put that in. Alright, so to get my vintagey look, I'm going to have to go for bits of old quilt. Now, not all of these parts of these quilt are going to work, but... You know, I might take bits and pieces apart and use some of the reds and the greens and maybe even some of the blues. So on each quilt, like even love that. It's kind of a really faded red and even like the old white bits as well. So I'll be pulling some bits and pieces apart. And this one here, it's really sort of ripped up and destroyed, but it's got some good good colors that will work those Christmassy blocks these blocks even I love the stripes so in the blue packs you will get quite a bit of stripe because I love stripe and I've got a lot of it so I'm going to be taking apart some of these old bits of quilt and then this one here I absolutely love and it's just like that whole section there could go really well the indigo and then we've got some red up here and even these kind of parts could work well so I would definitely be using this one and I'll take off the yellow background because I won't be using that. So that's the old quilt. And then the last thing I wanted to show you was um, Rach gave me these upholstery fabrics. So I don't know, Rach, you can say how old they are. Some of them are old and some of them are newer. Um, but I've pulled the ones that are kind of in the right colour theme. And you could do them, you could do them reverse. So I think that's the back side. And then you get a different look on the other side. So you could go both ways. So I'm going to use some bits, bits of these upholstery fabrics. Less shiny on that side, more shiny on that side. This one feels like it's a really old piece. Okay. And the back side. This one here feel I don't know how old it is but it, it feels like it's in good condition um so I know she got these at the markets like you might even like I might even you me <laughs> I might even cut and have that as like a trim that's going down a page so so we'll see so these are all I think silk you can see you can see on the back all the threads that they've used to make them um another green one front side Backside's quite shiny. I probably wouldn't use the backside. I might use a little bit of the front side. This one's really pretty. Little flowers. So little snippets of these will work well. Actually, the backside's not too bad. You could use a bit of the back. And then there's this one, which is really lovely. Good red. Kind of a rusty red. And then that's the back. So that is my box of things all the things that I've put aside to use I'm sure I'll be pulling out other bits and pieces over the course of the project and I will also use things like we will be putting things in like my little stamp Santas that I've put into my kits okay like my Santas they're vintagey um, so that's what I'll be playing around with so I'm just gonna turn off the video and come back in a minute and show you um, I'm going to start putting together the background for my first block. So I'll be back soon. Okay, so I'm back. So just to refresh your memory, this is the book I'm going to use. It's one that Rach gave me. Um, I might find later on that this spine is not wide enough, so I can potentially extend it. So we'll see how we go. Um, and I've worked out that if I just come in a little bit, my pages can be around four and a half inches wide by six and a half inches tall. So I'm just coming in a bit. I know my pages often get a little bit bigger and if I add lace onto it, it's going to cover that up. So I started off by cutting a piece of that old quilt um, that I said I really liked. And I wanted to do um, the pale colour and I'm going to add some bits and pieces to stitch onto this. Because my plan for my deer is that I want to embroider like a deer head with the antlers up there and just the head and a little bit of the neck 
and then I want to do some berries and holly in its in you know on its head like a little garland on its head um, so I want a nice neutral background so you can see the deer and I'm not going to fill the deer in with embroidery I'm just going to do like line work like probably like a chocolate brown line work um, so the first thing is this is quite thick with the wadding in so I want to take this back piece off and then this yellow piece can be used for something else later on it's got all the old stitching and because it's old it can come apart quite easily and and it will still have a quilted look on the front so I'm not I'm not too worried about that um, but to help me get it off I'm just using my seam ripper and I'll pop a few of the stitches and then I should be able to pull it off quite easily And just for anyone that doesn't know what a seam ripper is, they look like this. Can you see that little end? And you basically slide the end under the stitch and then you can pop it off. This one's Clover brand, but you can get lots of brands and you can get them really cheaply. So if I pop about every third stitch... the yellow background will just come away really easily. Oops. So today I went to see the new Thor movie, Love and Thunder. Um, my son is a big Marvel fan. I really like all those kind of movies too. Um, I really enjoyed it. There's a few fun cameos, celebrity cameos in it. And there's lots of humour. The um, Kiwi director, he's he's got a really good sense of humour. So he does put a lot of jokes in there, which I love. Um, and I kind of I like his Kiwi sense of humour because, you know, there's a lot of similarities there um, to Australian humour. And... A lot of the um, Marvel movies have um, huge amounts of productions in Australia. In fact, we live um, very close to the studio where they do a lot of the production. They do a lot in Sydney, um, and there were parts of the um, parts of the movie that they actually filmed in our local park called Centennial Park, um, where they had a movie set there for quite a few weeks, and they were filming it. So. Um, it's always uh, good to watch a new Marvel movie. But what I did, I stuffed up though. I um, <laughs> There's two cinemas I normally go to. One that's really close, it called Fox, or Fox Studio. It used to be called Fox Studio. It's now called Entertainment Quarter. And um, we often go to our movies there because that's the closest one to home. And they've got the recliner seats, which we like because there's another cinema near us that doesn't have the recliner seats, which we don't like. Um, and then there's another one that's about half an hour away, um, but they have recliner seats too. And sometimes we go there because it's in a big shopping centre and if we want to go to other shops, we'll go there. Anyway, I went to the one close to home. I booked the movie early in the morning, got my son up, booked him in, even though he's on holidays, got him up for the 9am session. We were very slow getting there, running late. And um, literally we're meant to be there at 9 and they normally start fairly on time at that cinema. And um, I was asking the lady where the cinema was because I couldn't find the right one. And um, she said, no, you're at the wrong cinema. And I worked <laughs> that I'd booked at the other one, which from where we were was about a 20-minute drive. And it was meant to start at 9, and at that stage it was almost 10 past 9. Anyway, um, my son wasn't happy. So we jumped in the car and I had to race him over to the other one. And luckily the other one never starts on time. It's always at least half an hour late. And we actually got there about five minutes before it started. So we didn't miss a thing, thankfully, because he would have been shitty with me. <laughs> okay. So anyway, what I'm going to do, so I'm doing the same method with this one that I did with my last journal and I'm just using calico as my backgrounds and you can already see there that that's a little bit bigger but it doesn't matter because I don't mind stuff hanging out 
sorry, excuse me. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop off the camera again. I just want to find a few more little scraps of fabric that I'm going to stitch onto this, and then I'm going to cant the stitch the whole thing down in place. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I'm back again, um, and I've pulled out some little um, bits and pieces of fabric. So this is to show you that even the tiniest scrap, now that's a scrap that I have cut off the edge of a fabric that I've put into my blue packs, and I've got a little bowl of little scraps, and tiny little scraps can come in handy. Okay, that's a scrappy piece that I have... Um, tea dyed and I've kept the little scraps and then sometimes I like to fray the edges up a little bit more just to have strings dangling all over the piece that's an old piece of Japanese fabric a little piece of um, muslin cheesecloth that's tea dyed um, so this was a little scrap some of the kits have got some of this in it so I've done one that way and then this one here I've flipped it so it's the opposite side Okay, so I've gone with the red, white, and blue theme. Actually, I think I might add in a bit of green too. I love this fabric. I've got quite a lot of this fabric. Again, I think I got this from Mel Melanie in Melbourne. Um, I might rip up a piece of that just to get a little bit of green. Like even things like those edge bits, like Mandy uses them and stitches them down. So I don't throw bits and pieces away, eh? I've got salvages everywhere, I've got um, scraps everywhere, I just try to keep bits and pieces. I don't think I want them. Oops, I'm just cutting it, but I don't, I don't want to have all these neat lines, I want it to fray up. So it looks like a... You know what else I was playing with is actually wrecking it. Just using my um, seam ripper to scuff it up so it looks like it's all old. Loosening up fibres, tearing them out. Because often when you tear the fabric, it rips really straight on this, on the, um, you know, on the um, seams like the weft or the warp. I don't know which one's which, but I want this to look a bit older, like it's all destroyed. You do this with a book all as well. You could rip that all up. You might even want to get a hole in the middle somewhere. I can disrupt a few fibers in the middle here. Anyway, that looks pretty old and dodgy. I've got strings everywhere now. They're all over my mat. Okay. So let's have a look at where we might put this one. I don't know if I want all those strings everywhere. I don't want to neaten it up too much though. I want it to look old like this is a really old piece of fabric. Screw it up a bit. No, I do like that one there. I'm actually thinking I might put, stitch that there. And I might stitch that one there. So I'm kind of like layering up, doing a collage of fabrics. Now I was deciding what to stitch in. I've got a lot of crochet cottons, different colours. I think I actually want the stitches to stand out. I'm pretty sure this is Wonderfeel. I got this from um, Lisa Mattock. And I'm going to use this to do my canthus style stitching so that it stands out. So... I need to hold my fabrics in place. I don't care if they go a bit crooked. This is supposed to be really rustic. And 
and I'll just I'll take these pins out as I move around so as I kind of stitch over all right just in case anyone's new I'm going to explain what I'm doing and then I'll turn off the video finish off the canthus style stitching and then that's going to be the background for me today and then next week um, my plan is that I will draw my reindeer or my deer on here with its antlers sort of up the top and I might get a bit of that stitching done for next week and then next week what I'll do is I'll do the little embellishments I'll embroider some berries and some holly and stuff on its head between its horns if you are stuck for an idea go to Pinterest make yourself make yourself a board Rach mum and I have made a Christmas um, journal of stitchery inspiration board it's a private one it's on our sites but you won't be able to see it we just keep that for ourselves um, and when we find ideas that we like or something that inspires us we pin it so that we if we're stuck for ideas we go look at that board and then things will pop into our head we'll start getting some ideas I highly recommend Pinterest. I know we've we've all got thousands of images saved. Yes, that is a rabbit hole that you can spend hours going down. But um, I mean, I've got boards for pretty much everything. Like even eventually, I plan to renovate my apartment. Rachel's just done hers. She had boards for her apartment. I've got boards. For every room in my apartment um, it just it's a good place to collect your ideas and your inspiration also sorry if I sound funny I do have a little bit of a cold at the moment a bit sniffly I think Rach is the same she's got a cold too okay so just showing you what I'm doing for any newbies this is just called a running stitch um, I call it often canthus stitching um, because um, in India they make quilts out of layers of fabric and then they do a running stitch to hold them all together and they're called canthus quilts um, so it can be called other things just a running stitch um, also just trying to think it's done in Japan on the Boro quilts where they do a running stitch with lots of old pieces of Japanese fabric often the indigo fabrics um, it doesn't have to be perfectly even you can see I've got a small stitch and then a bigger one it's basically holding all the layers of fabric together in place all right I'm going to turn off the camera and I'm going to do my running stitch and then I'm going to come back and show you what I'm up to. Okay, popping the video back on to show you where I'm at. So I've done some blue canthus stitching all there. I went to, to the beige crochet cotton. I've stitched across there, up and down there and just up and down this little bit. Now I actually want to add some red onto this one and this one and then I'll finish off the blue through the middle there. Um, one person left me a message and was asking me to do a video on different threads and things like that. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of a rundown but what I will do is I'll link um, a video from Ariana Zercher who's awesome at explaining different types of threads and needles and I'm pretty sure I've shared that video before with our first project but I'll link it down the bottom as well um, so that any newbies can have a look so hang on I'm going to show you that again I'll just what I just did was a quilter's knot and I'll show you how to do that for the newbies so you get the very end of your thread and you run it down your needle towards the eye okay so running it down my needle towards the eye and then all I do is I wrap my needle a few times doesn't matter how many I just do a few because this is a thin cotton I did it about four or five times then what I do is I hold the thread between my fingers 
and I run it down my needle and pull it all the way to the end and that makes what we call a little quilter's knot. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll also show you how I end off the um, thread on the back. So while I'm stitching, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on threads. So I use a whole variety of threads. Now you do not have to. If you are a beginner, the most basic threads that you'll probably have is a stranded cotton. So I'll show you a sample of a stranded cotton. In this box I have a few, these are my unsorted ones. So this DMC is the name brand that makes it. This is stranded cotton. So if I get one of the cottons, it's actually, if I split it, six strands, six strands of thread. Okay, can you see that? And you can use any amount you want. You could use one, two, three, four, five or six. Now I often use all six. Sometimes I use three, sometimes if I want it a bit thinner I'll go to two. I don't really use one strand with stranded cotton. These come in every colour under the sun and then you can get a lot of variegated ones as well. So I particularly love the variegated, that is not one. These are all stranded cottons. They're really cheap, you can get them for like, they're usually in Australia a dollar a skein, but at my crafty op shop you can get them for 50 cents and you basically can get any colour you want. So they're great. Ooh, I just found some more of them. Anyway, this is just my junk box here. Okay, another thread that is very common is this one here. It's a perlay thread. Okay, that is a thread that you do not split. Okay, so that's quite a thick one. They come in different thicknesses. That is a five. A five is quite thick. Most people tend to use an eight. I think that one's about an eight. Okay, if you want a thicker one, you can use a thicker one. These ones here, they're also, this one's made by Coates. Um, you can get them made by, or oh, there's an old anchor one. A lot of these are old that I've bought at um, my crafty op shop. Um, you can get DMC ones as well. Like I've got a lot of different ones, different colours. They're good as well. They give you a thicker look. Okay. Um, then outside of that, there's a lot of different threads that you can use. Um, there's wools, there's silk. Um, you've got normal sewing machine cotton. So... That's what I call this, just your sewing machine cotton. Most of the time I use cotton. This one's polyester. I only have the red in polyester. That's why I'm using it. But usually I use cotton. Um, you can get silk threads. I use these threads when I want to have really tiny stitches, like invisible stitches, or I'm doing needle turn applique. Um, you do not need all of these. It's up to you what you get. You can get metallic threads. Whoops, I've got threads going everywhere. Metallic threads. These are kind of cotton, thick cotton yarns. You wouldn't you wouldn't separate these as well. They're, they're for a thicker look. And then you've also got wools. So that's a wool. That's a thin one. You can get thin or thick. Um, depending on, I'm just saying, I've got a thick one nearby that I can show you. Well, I can certainly show you on here that I've stitched with a thick one there. So, look, there's so many different types of um, threads that you can use. Um, a lot, I love a lot of hand-dyed and variegated threads. And in terms of needles, I probably most commonly use about three different types. Um, so, a chenille needle is like this. A chenille needle has a nice big eye, so it's easier to thread things like your perlay cottons or if you're using all six strands of your DMC. I'm just saying, no, not that one. Um, another one I use, I haven't got one in front of me at the moment, is a milliner's needle, which basically, if I pretended this was one, um, the eye is no thicker than the body of the needle so it's very good for wrapping style stitches like french knots and bullion stitches and then there's just general embroidery needles as well um, i tend to use a needle with an eye as small as i can thread so like this has got quite a small eye and i've just used that um, with this fairly thick um, perlay cotton if I can thread it, I'll use a smaller one just because it's easier to move in your hand. Um, but I do like stitching with milliners because they are an even 
um, thickness, it means that they're easy to pull through the fabric, particularly when you're going through multiple layers of fabric. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea. Um, the only other needle I do use quite commonly, these are tiny, tiny, skinny and long. That is a beading needle. Now they are tiny to thread and what I actually use for beading is my silk thread because it's really, really fine and I can get the thread through. The other thread that I've got, I've got this one called the bottom line and it's um, by Superior Threads and it is... Um, it's a polyester thread, but it's really good for needle turn applique and also for beading. So I've got that as well, which is similar to my silk one, but it's polyester. Okay, so most, most threads that I, I use are natural fibres. I occasionally have some polyester or um, are those other ones I'm trying to think of. can't remember. I don't use them that much. I'm more so cotton, linen, wool, silk would be the types of threads I use and you can get threads all over the place so just going to your local hobby or quilting store you'll be able to I'd just start off with some basic colors um, so if you're going for a, your Christmas journal you know maybe some greens reds blues I like chocolate brown um, white black maybe a couple of different grays different types of greens are good um, just to get yourself started and then you can just slowly build up build up some supplies um, we will certainly use a variety of threads in our projects but it does not mean you have to go and spend a heap in fact I would encourage you with these types of projects I mean we have been collecting for years and years and years we have so much stuff because you know I've been I've been um stitching oh gosh I learned Mum sent me to sewing classes when I was like a young teenager. Um, Rach started later. Oh, she did cross stitch back then, but she started um, playing around with stuff like this a bit later. But Mum, as long as I can remember, has always done something relating to stitching, whether it was embroidery, silk ribbon embroidery, wool embroidery, cruel embroidery. Um, she did weaving. Uh, she used to make quilts when we were younger. So she has always done some form of hand stitching. And then before mum, granny, mum's mum, she was also creative. She could sew, but she did a lot of knitting. All right, I'm just showing you now how I end up on the back. So um, it doesn't matter where you end up. What I tend to do is I just find the last stitch I've gone. I capture a little tiny piece of fabric and I just loop it under. And if I do that a few times around the same spot, you're not going to see it on the front because I'm capturing a bit of fabric at the back there. If I do it a few times and even go back under those stitches that I'm making three or four times, that's going to be secure. Um, what Rach does, and you can do this as well, you can go under your little threads or capture a little bit of fabric. And what Rach does is she comes back through that loop. So it almost makes a knot. Either way will work well and your fabric will be nice and secure, your stitches will be. Now one thing I do want you to note as well, if you are new, as you can see, I've done all the stitching down here and the fabric has come in. When you're doing slow stitching or embroidery, your piece, your block will shrink a little bit. So for me, if my block does shrink too much, when I put this down onto my base page, so let's imagine that this white fabric here is my double page which will be my base page so let's pretend it's like that that's my base page when I want to stitch it down I might find it's a little bit small I can add some fabric underneath it or I can add something like lace or some kind of trim if I want to so I've got options so I wouldn't worry if it shrinks down a little bit if you are worried about it shrinking maybe Cut your block just slightly bigger um, and uh, you be it's easier to actually expand your block than to make it smaller so what I could probably do is I probably would add a, a little bit more fabric or a fabric ruffle or something like that later so you don't need to worry about anything like that until towards the end focus on doing your blocks get your measurement of approximately what you want to do them at rip up all your base pieces like your calico pieces um, all the same size you can even pre-rip 
you're going to end up with at least 12. So you can pre-rip them and then um, just have them stacked up and ready to go. All right, so I think that's enough talking for me today on the video. I will finish this off, this slow stitching on here. As you can see, it kind of turns it into one piece of fabric. And I will come back next week and this will all be done. And what I'll also have done is I will draw and I probably will have pre-stitched my um, deer as well. So next week will be me finishing off the block. We're quicker this month because, well, this project volume two because we're aiming to get our two blocks a month done. But remember, if you're finding that too intimidating or you're not going to be able to keep up with it or you're too busy with work or family, etc., try and do one block a month and just pick which theme you want. So our next theme will come out in two weeks from today. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. A lot of information. We've got ourselves going and I can't wait to see either your deer or your reindeer. Thanks for watching. Bye.